Getting ready for Kansas as we catch up with Coach Gundy again. And, you know, I'm curious about this. It's not like you started 6-1 and one by some accident. I mean, you've, you've played very well. But at the same time, young people are perhaps a little different now than they used to be. Do you have to make sure they get their edge back, their confidence back after last Saturday? Or do they think about the fact that, hey, you know, we weren't 6-1 and one by accident? How does that work? I think young people live kind of week to week nowadays. So it's important that coaches do a good job with leadership, myself, assistant coaches, um, instilling good information in them. And then it's always important to be upfront and honest with the players, tell them exactly what happened, in our opinion. Uh, and then you share the wealth on a good game and you share the disappointment on games when you don't play as well with the players. So it's not always, um, you guys need to make this play, you should have done this. It's, hey, as coaches, we should have done a better job during the week. Offensively, maybe we should have made these calls more than this call. Defensively, maybe we should have used this coverage more. So it's a group effort, no matter what happens on Saturday. I think that's important. Um, all those things factor in. And then, fortunately, we have a strong culture here. It's been, it's been here a long time. Uh, I tell the team year-round, we start training in January all the way through the February, up through spring ball, and in August. I tell them that the, the college football is a long season. And whether we're fired up about the way we played on Saturday or we're disappointed about the way we played on Saturday, when we come to, on Sunday, we have to go back to work. That's just the way college football is because we've got a game the next Saturday and they're not changing it or backing it up while we feel sorry about, uh, for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I think in handling that way with the team, they understand that there's a correlation between that and life and it helps teach them, but also helps kind of let them mature and get their edge back quicker. So if there may be two things that you feel like you need growth in for November to go the way you want it to, what would those maybe two things be? Oh, well, you know, we still want to average more per rush uh, with our running backs. Um, we've been better. We got so far behind at Kansas State early that well, you can really discard that from a, an average standpoint. And then um, off uh, defensively, uh, we want to be able to minimize big plays. Kansas State got some big plays on us, not huge ones, but – the, they got the, the 12 to 18 to 25 yarders on us. And then we want to continue to, to minimize those running plays where they're getting 6, 8, 10, 12 yards before they're contested. We want to make sure we're hitting them before that. Uh, working on those things will help our team. Yeah, how do you fix the big plays on defense typically? Well, it's, uh, it's never one thing. In most cases, we could be in coverages at – um, put us a, a half a man short stopping the run based on trying to protect a young player in coverage. And then there can be technical and fundamental issues with maybe what a call was versus that look or a particular player getting cut off and not being in a gap. So I go back to what I said, it's never one thing. In most cases, it's a variety of things that we need to get a little bit better at each week. What have you seen with Kansas that maybe has got your attention in terms of the fact that they've made some significant progress? Why, why do you think that's happened from your point of view? They were making uh, progress last year. You and I have talked about this. They, they, beat Can they beat Texas at Texas. They were one play away, in my opinion, from beating OU last year. Mm -hmm. When they came to play us, we were expecting a dogfight, and it just we, we perfect stormed them last year. We, we got ahead of them and kind of blew them out early, and they could never catch up. So they really weren't that far off. You know, Kansas has been interesting from the fact that with the last few coaches they've had there, they've had good games, and then they've had games that were just ugly, just from an outsider looking in. Well, now they've kind of put it together, and I think the, the answer to your question is the quarterback gives them a lot of plays. He can run really well. They have a scheme built to where it's a, an option-type play, potentially with RPOs built on it. So from an X's and O's standpoint, you're a half man short on defense no matter what they do. You have to rally to the ball. Then you've got to try to defend the throws in the RPO and then make sure you, somebody has the pitch in the option. 
Now, again, from an outsider looking in, the downfall of that system is the hits the quarterback takes. So, because you'll get people say, well, why doesn't everybody do that? Well, right. your quarterback's at risk taking a number of hits, if, uh, in my opinion, just watching it based on the way it's supposed to be executed. Is it pretty difficult to get ready for that option style attack? in just one week, especially when you are as young as you are in the yeah. back end? Yeah, it's, it's, an, uh, it's an RPO attack with another variable being potentially able to pitch the ball. Yeah. So there can be some issues with it. Um, the majority of the teams that they played this year haven't, haven't defended it very well. A couple teams have, but most of them haven't. So hopefully we have uh, the, the right plan and we can rally to the ball and get guys down to try to get them out of what would be a normal routine offensively. Time for What's Your Beef, brought to you by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. You can see the quality through the clear plastic packaging. This is not really so much what's your beef or a complaint, but what is beefy, and that's the new Big 12 television mm-hmm. agreement, which, you know, obviously you keep very close tabs of because it impacts your program, but something to be excited about. So we've come a long ways uh, in the last six months, um, nine months, compared to where we were the, the months after OU and Texas made a decision to go to the SEC. A lot, of, a lot of people saw doom and gloom for the Big 12. Some people might even have seen doom and gloom for Oklahoma State. But, you know, if you remember from day one, I said, one, Oklahoma State's going to be fine. We have a national brand now. We have a marketing tool. The success that we have is – going to want people to put us in their conference or tie us into their television contract in the future. I always felt like Oklahoma State would be just fine, and I said that publicly. I didn't forecast that we would be able to grab four teams like we did that made us that much better. And then we had a change in commissioner. We brought in a guy that's a businessman. He's a wheeler or dealer. He negotiates. He gets it. You know, he's been in NASCAR, he's been in the NBA. Uh, he's been around people, and he understands how to make a deal. Mm-hmm. After spending some time with him in the summer, once we hired him as the Big 12 commissioner, I said, and I was really comfortable in saying, that he's going to find a way to secure what I would call a lucrative long-term contract for this conference, which is the very most important thing we do. None of this is going to run without television money. So he's secured us through 31, and for the lack of a better term, we got a raise, which stabilizes uh, a lot of people's thoughts when it comes to balancing budgets, um, how to lay out planning for facilities, uh, recruiting for all sports, different things. And so we're very fortunate that we have Brett as our commissioner and that we were able to recruit the teams that were able to put together a lucrative contract. And I had also mentioned, Dave, I thought that it would be a four- or five-year deal. It ended up being a six-year deal, which is good, but I felt like the the television networks and the discussions that I had with certain people weren't wanting to extend a 12- or 15-year contract. Right, right. And I don't know that those are going to happen anymore, but maybe the SEC, different category. But I'm not so sure that our commissioner wanted to extend it that way, that he might have wanted to secure this amount of uh, money over this period of time because he knows that we're going to grow and get better. And our, our conference should be uh, of more value at that particular time anyway. But to secure ourselves, what, eight or nine years from now is important. And it allows the athletic directors and the, president and this, uh, the presidents in this conference to do their job now. Our play breakdown is coming up. Stay with us. We are back in time to break down some plays and nothing like a really good catch to get us started. It's awesome, yeah. We uh, got one of our base plays here we've run forever, and uh, Spencer does a good job putting it on the spot, and and uh, Nine did a great job. You know, Green runs good routes, coming back, makes a fabulous catch. I mean, it was – I mean, that's a rare catch. Um, uh, they, they reviewed it because I think at some point they thought, you know, based on his arm angle and what happened, that surely that couldn't happen. It's hard to trap a ball between your biceps. Yeah, how do you do that? Well, I don't know. I couldn't do that. But he, he did. Big, strong kid is able to do it. So 
um, I mean, about as good a coverage as you can have. But uh, and where he's at right now to be able to put his elbow under the ball, that's hard to do. So anyway, big time catch. Yeah, certainly was to say the least. And obviously the play was uh, was confirmed. Yeah, so we're uh, you know now we're third and five, uh, seven zero game. Got the ball around midfield. Um, got a good uh, good play call for man, and um, put it out there, make a catch, and first down on the on the forty yard line. You know, and the good news is for Jaden Nixon. A couple of weeks ago, he wasn't able to come up with a catch That's in right. a similar situation. Two weeks later, he does. That's exactly right. Yep. So we had a good uh, good start there. Um, here, here's uh, Tom. You know, we lost Tom, unfortunately, yeah. uh, to, for an, with an injury for the season. Tom's been awesome for us, uh, for our team. But uh, this was a, a good one for him and a game that, uh, unfortunately, he went out on and puts the ball down there just like he does all the time and uh, down it on the four-yard line. And uh, we're going to miss Tom, appreciate what he's brought to our organization, not only as a player but as a person. And, Kind of some of the the, the things from uh, the from the country down under. Yes, uh, being from Australia is pretty cool. So uh, we had a few good plays in this game. You know, obviously we didn't play as well as we wanted to. The score didn't dictate it, but um, there's times they got us. But there's a few times we made a few plays like this with uh, Big Sammy um, getting rid of the the offensive lineman using his hands and uh, um, you know making a play and, and keeping us going, but. Uh, that, that was a, a difficult game for all of us, but a uh, good life lesson for us uh, to, to uh, appreciate and enjoy the times when things are going good. Yeah. And a great life lesson for the players that uh, things don't go your way. You, uh, you fight back, you fight and claw, believe in yourself, believe in your team, try to get ready for the next one. That's our show. We'll see you next week.